what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And I'm excited to introduce today's guest, which I will in a second, Vicki Higgins. But before I do, Vicki, I always like to point out other episodes of the podcast people should check out, right? And, um, you know, we were talking before the call, you know, really you help companies on a social mission um, and bettering the universe, bettering their company. And there's two interviews that stuck out about that, which is Robert Wallace. Um, so check that one out. Speaker, author, consultant with over 40 years of business experience. He is a true rags to riches story that began in the Baltimore projects um, and just an amazing story. And I think one of my favorite interviews um, and it was it happened during a tense time in America. So you'll have to check that out. And then John and Dr. Denitra Griffin are co-founders of the largest black owned security firm in the United States. AGP, which stands for Always Giving Back. Uh, it's an investigative service business, and it's based out of Chicago. Someone from you know Chase Bank was like, you need to be interviewing these people. They're doing amazing things and doing good in the world. So I'm like, I'm in. Um, and this episode is brought to you by Rise25. We help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And we do that by helping you run your podcast. You now, Vicky has a podcast. I, I think every business should have a podcast. And I've been saying it even before it was self serving, Vicky, that I had a service that helped people do it for over 10 years. I'm like, you should have a podcast because the number one thing in my life and many people's lives is relationships. And there's always, ways to give to your relationships. I found no better way than to have a podcast, feature them, profile them, their thought leadership, their company on and spread to the world what they're doing. So if you've thought about doing it, you can email us any questions. We have lots of free resources. Um, you can go to rise25.com and check out more. Um, Vicki Higgins. Um, is a sponsorship and brand partnership expert. She's CEO of CXP Sponsorship Agency, host of the Sponsorship Mastery Podcast. You know, just, you know, Vicki, when I read this, okay, this is tremendous, okay? She negotiated the 2019 naming rights for Toyota Arena. She landed over $20 million in sponsorship deals since 2018 with brands like Toyota, Coca-Cola, American Express, Lucas Oil, and more. We're going to talk about some creative ways to handle sponsorship because she's the expert. But prior to starting CXP Sponsorship Agency, she worked with major NBA sports franchise, an international airline, and was an executive with a few of the most prestigious tourism destinations in the U.S. Vicki, thanks for joining me. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's really a pleasure. You know, I have to start off with the naming rights. Because that is, I can't imagine all of the moving pieces that are involved in the naming rights for an arena. How did, you know, that, how did that start? Thank you for asking. It's one of my most proud moments, actually. When I received a call to uh, take on this project, I was a little bit nervous. You know, we were, I would be really, a lot <laughs> we were really under the gun on time. And sometimes these deals take a little bit of time to get on budgets and things like that. So when you think of like Staples sponsoring Staples Center or even like Toyota sponsoring the Olympics, my agency is the agency that creates those partnerships. So when I received the call that this venue in Southern California, their naming partner was expiring and they needed a new name. Now, that if that wasn't the only thing, all of their partnerships were expiring. They were at their end of 10 years. So they wanted my agency to take a look at all of the partnerships, um, see what ones would be the right ones to renew and keep on board. And if there were others uh, that we needed to move along. And, uh, and in the meantime, while we were doing that, oh, by the way, can you bring us a name? So I went out and uh, started knocking on doors, basically. I talked to a lot of agencies. I work really closely with ad agencies. We are like the secret weapon for sponsorship with the ad agencies. So I went to a number of my contacts at ad agencies. And, you know, I also believe in first going to 
the people who are already supporting the venue. So I went to all of the partners. Um, Toya was actually a, a partner at that time. And um, although at a much smaller level and, and, and they said, you know, no, we're not interested in the naming rights. So I said, okay, no problem. Just wanted to come to you first. And then we went on to the other partners of the arena and everyone declined, which was fine. They really wanted to see us get a great name, but they weren't really willing to step up to the plate. So we went out to the market and um, there were two or three brands that I was really pursuing uh, for many months. And that negotiation is quite interesting because not only are you talking about like, is this the right market? Is it the right fit for the brand? What are the brand goals? What are the, what's, how is this going to be measured? What's going to be success at the end of, of the day? And so really having a deep conversation about the brand goals, mission, you know, what their revenue sales um, initiatives were, what their marketing initiatives were, how they wanted to show up in the community. So I had that conversation with a number of brands that were, you know, very uh, focused on the market. Then we took the next step and uh, started digging in a little deeper on the financials of what this would look like. And a couple of those players dropped out. And then we had gone down the pathway pretty far with a company that was not actually based in the U.S. Um, and they were very interested. And then uh, suddenly there were some political concerns and talks of tariffs and talks of this. And they're like, ah, it may not be the right time for us to put our name on a building in Southern California. So they bailed at the last minute. We were almost at the, the time when this name, the well, former name was going to expire. I was like, oh my gosh. So um, I continued to, to push. We had another brand that was very interested, but you know, to be honest, I, in my heart, didn't feel like it was the right fit. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really wonderful investment company. Um, but, you know, this area of Southern California is a really ethnically diverse area. It's very highly Hispanic. It's, it's a really awesome market, but it's family focused. It's uh, a little bit more blue collar. And I just didn't feel like this big wealth management firm was exactly the right fit. And plus, I loved the people. They were great. Um, and they were really interested in putting their name on the building. It just wasn't exactly the... It wasn't a match, a perfect match. It wasn't a match. It wasn't yeah. a match. So I kept kind of holding them in the wings and then continually, you know, pursuing some other opportunities. And I just could not get Toyota out of my mind. So I mm. contacted them again. I said, you know, I realized, you know, official vehicle maybe that's where we land and that's fine. Um, but can we have a face-to-face -face conversation? So I set up a meeting, went to the meeting and I kid you not, I was sitting in the meeting and my contact had to go take a call real fast. And then she was coming back into the room. And I just had this feeling come over me that this is the naming rights partner. I just knew it. I had chills. I was like, this, these are, this is the partner that has to be on this arena. So I had my presentation all ready to go for official vehicle. And uh, she came back in the room and sat down and we started talking. I'm like, what is the goal for the dealers that are in this area? What is the, what do you want to, how do you want to connect with the consumers? What are the things that you're doing? And I just started asking her questions. And then I said, you know, I'm sitting here prepared to talk with you about being in the official vehicle. No problem. And I respect that that's where you want to go. Um, but I closed my computer and I said, listen, heart to heart, this is your market. These are your people. These people are driving to LA. They're driving Priuses. <laughs> they're driving, you know, trucks. They're, you know, working. They're family oriented. Like these are your people. I said this, I just don't want to put any other name on this building other than Toyota. And like, this is the market that this is, this has to be the right fit. Like, I just want to see if there is any way we can make this happen. And so she said, I really get it. She's like, I have looked through everything and we've been trying to figure out what we were going to do in that market. And she's like, I think that this could be a good fit. We need to present it to the board and go, you know, through that, um, the board, the dealers, you know, we need to talk with them. We need to talk with corporate. We need to see how this will work. So um, in about 10 minutes, I had a tentative yes. And then we moved on down the pathway to talk to the board of directors, provide all of our presentations, all of our legal to corporate. And in July of 2019, we were able to do the big unveiling of Toyota Arena. 
in Ontario, California. And it was such a proud moment, but I, it's one of those things of just trusting your guts and also really not giving in. I think the other wealth management company would have probably even been more money, um, but I just felt like it wasn't the right thing. And so I really wanted to stay with my heart and know that this was the right fit for that market. What are the, that's an amazing story. I love it. And um, what were some, what are some of the options for a sponsor? So the stadium, they're like, okay, Vicky, stadium's out of my budget. What all, what other um, options are there when someone's talking about a venue like that? You know, with all of our clients, we actually go through a process and it's the CXP method. So any venue um, or even an event, uh, we sit down and we take a look at like, who are they? What are they all about? Who's the audience? Um, we do an asset inventory and we look at the inventory of every single thing they have to offer. Most places, like most venues or events are really selling themselves short. They don't realize some of the things that could be incredibly valuable to a brand and they don't even include it in their packages because they don't realize that they are sitting on a, a golden egg. Um, but I sit down and go through the asset inventory. My team does a really deep dive in that. We look at all kinds of opportunities that we could help connect that brand, the sponsor, with the audience. And so the asset inventory is really one of the first things that we do. The newer thing that we're doing within the asset inventory is not only about marketing or signage or digital advertising or on-site activation, but now we're also including in that inventory corporate social responsibility initiatives. Can they engage their employees? Can they do things that are helping the community? Can they partner up with this venue to do something around women's empowerment or Black Lives Matter or um, diversity, equality, inclusion. So we're really enhancing the assets now because we know that that is very important to brands. So the first step in the CXP method is the asset inventory. The second step is creating packages that would be um, not only aligned with a title like naming sponsor like Toyota, but also it might be aligned with the official beverage or it might be aligned with a founding partner. So we developed some different packages. Um, brands are really tired of the bronze, silver, gold initiatives. Um, so we try to get very creative in customizing those packages for the, what the brand needs. And then the third step in the CXP method is the valuation. This is something that's really important. Most venues and events put like, hey, we need X amount of dollars. But really what we want to do is we want to come up with a number that is a fair market value. So if you're buying this set of assets in San Francisco or in Texas or in New York, you're getting a fair market value for those assets. So that's something that's very important to the brands. They want to make sure that if they're spending on something in one market, it's equal to what they would be spending in other markets. So we do a really deep valuation on what those sponsorship assets would be um, valued at for, for our clients. And then we help create a presentation and then we pitch and go uh, go sell to clients. And so those are the steps in the CXP method. And the every venue is a little different. Every event is a little different. They have their own unique twist. We try and find those unique pieces and really highlight them so it can attract the right brands. We're all about fewer, bigger, better. So that's how we work with our clients. I'd love to hear some examples of creative sponsorship. I mean, basically you come to an organization and you create money out of thin air. I mean, it's not out of thin air, but I mean, you find money for people. So it's like, I mean, I can envision, so you work with um, events and venues or any other type of companies that you tend to, to work with. Well, actually, because I appreciate you asking that. Most of our history has been with venues like naming rights deals mm -hmm. or high level partnerships and large scale events. Typically, our events have been over 200,000 people. So when we are asked to work on a project, um, typically we've had some minimums that we needed the, the clients to hit. Um, now we have some online digital tools that we're able to serve more people. And we also recognize that because we are taking the step to help brands see how they can better use their diversity, equality, inclusion, or their corporate social responsibility funds and marrying those funds with their marketing budgets. Um, we're now working in venues, events, and also the film and entertainment industry. 
So we're really excited to have that opportunity. We're working with a great group called Bridge X Media, and they're doing some amazing films that are all about diversity, equality, inclusion. They uh, really hit initiatives that we are dealing with today. And so we're helping them to find brand partners that would be a great fit for those um, films as well. Yeah. The reason I ask is because when I think creative sponsorships, I'm trying to get the frame of mind and I'm going to have you talk about some creative sponsorships, but I picture, you know, the traditional, if you're, you know, either at a, a large venue, obviously it's stadium, you know, you can have the banners around, or if you're an event, it could be the bags. It could be the something they're wearing around their neck. It could be, you know, the signs in the rows. Um, so, I'm, you know, I've seen, you know, out of stadiums, like people have bricks on the stadium. You know, I'm in Chicago. There's like stuff around Wrigley Field. So I'm sure this is stuff like you're in the matrix. You probably just see this stuff and then everything, the, all the code around it, what else could be done? So I would love to hear, to get the brainstorming and juices flowing. What are some examples of, of some of those creative sponsorships? Oh, I love that question. On the more traditional front, yes. There are marquees and electronic billboards and signage opportunities. That's pretty standard. Um, when we're looking at a brand, we're also looking at ways that we can help serve the brand. So we have a really long conversation with, all right, Toyota, as an example, what else could Toyota benefit from? How can we help them? How can this venue be helpful to them? So one of the great examples that we created for Toyota Arena is that we allow them a certain number of days a year that they can use our venue. Um, so normally That's they would awesome. have to pay sign to me go, up and yeah, right. Yeah. So normally they would have to pay to go rent a venue to shoot their commercials or to have a big um, parking lot sale or something like that. So how fun is it that many of the Toyota or Toyota commercials are shot at Toyota Arena? You may not see Toyota Arena in the background, but it gives them the opportunity to utilize that space, have their photo shoots, have the mm. trucks, the semis set up. So we really tried to look at ways that we could help them save budget and also be really creative to be um, serving them. So that's yeah. one of the things we've done. Another so when you're really quickly, so yeah. like you're doing a, a deep dive with the, that sponsor, you may find, oh, you, you know, when you do that deep dive, you may find, oh, I didn't realize that you have these company-wide events, right? And so you're, you know, saving them money as well with the sponsorship. Absolutely. So it's really, truly a strategic partnership. You know, when we're talking with a brand like Toyota or we're talking with any of our sponsors, we're really trying to understand, like, what are the ways that we can help you save money? What are the ways that we can help get your name out there? What are your goals so we can help you accomplish those goals? We really want this venue to be a great partner to you. That's why I say a lot of venues and, and properties like events they're sitting on things that they don't think about would be very valuable to a brand. So a venue, we, we entered into this agreement with a number of very unique qualities, like using the parking lot for sales or for commercial shoots, actually using inside the venue for commercial shoots. You see somebody running up the stairs with Nike or you know something like that. Like we have that opportunity to use the venue in a variety of ways, in addition to concerts and sporting events. So when it is a, a Tuesday morning and nobody's there, you know, what else can we be doing that's going to help, you know, the venue and also help the brand? So we try and create things like that. We also talk to them about employee engagement. So right now, especially in our world, so many businesses are struggling to get employees and keep employees. And one of the things that we're looking at are how can we serve our clients? How can we serve these sponsors and help them create more fun engagement opportunities? Maybe if you are, you know, achieving a, a certain level in sales, or maybe if you're hitting a, an attendance record or something, you can bring your family to a Disney on ice show, or you have the opportunity mm. to use tickets to the suite. So we're really trying to find ways that we can help the brands engage their employees and do things that are, um, you know, even having a, an online job, you know, fair that they can come to Toyota arena. It's a huge and, perk. I mean, and, if you're working yeah. for a company and you're like, Oh, I could maybe go to the box once a year. That, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And it's really inspiring because you know, the brand, you know, want like FedEx, they're looking for people to, to come on and work for them right now. 
And so as we talk to them about different opportunities, like having an opportunity out on the patio where they can have a job there and then bring everybody to the game or something like that, that's a really fun perk that not always venues and events think about. So we try and talk about employee engagement. We also try to talk about um, what are the things that they're doing from a corporate social responsibility? Are they into education? Are they into sustainability? Um, are they supporting black communities, brown communities? Um, we're working with a bank. They do a lot of financial literacy programs. So we have a, a program where we give you know a set number of tickets to the bank and then they can use that for all these kids and families that are going through this financial literacy program. So mm. we really try to make sure that our partnerships- They can that bridge we're their together, overall mission and social responsibility to you know, incorporate that into whatever sponsorship they're, you know, the perks yeah. of that sponsorship. Coca-Cola has a huge sustainability initiative. We just had a meeting with them and they were talking about all of the things that they can do to better enhance our venues so it's really more encouraging for people to recycle and, you know, they're also uh, doing a number of different things to put water in cans and you have really cool creative things that they're doing from a brand side. We love being the first to know about it on the venue side and my agency is the bridge, you know, my agency is bringing the two together. So I love being creative about that and, and I love companies that are taking a stand. You know, often a venue or an event is working with the marketing department or the marketing agency or the advertising agency. So one of the things that I really love is when we have the opportunity to not only have the marketing conversation, which is normal and traditional in the sports industry, but now when we have the opportunity to have a conversation about how can we help you from an HR perspective? How can we help you from corporate social responsibility? What are you doing in the community? Is there a corporate giving or community relations initiative that we can layer into this? Now, this does two things. It helps the brand, the Coke, the Toyota, the Amex, the, the Lucas Oils of the world, the Nikes of the world. It helps them forward their mission and it helps the venue or the property because now you're not only working with a marketing budget, you have corporate social responsibility budget or you have corporate giving budget or you have budget coming in from different areas of that company. And it really is a great way to enhance the revenue coming to that property. So I'm really excited about it. There are so many creative things. U.S. Bank is doing some great stuff on LGBTQ communities. Toyota is doing a ton of initiatives on mobility and helping communities get mobile and make sure people have vehicles. Um, McDonald's is doing some great things around um, community and equality and diversity. And a lot of people are doing employee engagement, you know, um, Walmart does a really great employee engagement in their communities and helps their employees get out into the community and engage. And if we can bridge that and help that happen at our venues or at our events, then it just really bolsters the initiative. So it's not just the brand talking about it. Now there's this huge opportunity for the brand and the team or the brand and the arena to talk about it. So it really makes a big impact. I want to talk, uh, Vicky, about venue and versus sponsor for a second. But uh, are there any other, before we move on to that, are there any other creative sponsorships we should make sure to mention? I see how you can partner with local, uh, you know, banks or communities or businesses to help, you know, push through an initiative or social responsibility. I can see how you know, you can use the venue for different things. You should be the Airbnb for stadiums. I mean, <laughs> right? like, yeah, it's like, oh, you, you need this? I'll Airbnb that stadium. I'll Airbnb it for you. No problem. Exactly. I love that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to integrate that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, I mean, I think, you know, we, there are so many great examples out there right now of brands that are doing good things in the world. You know, Nike made a commitment of over $89 million just in 2020 to impact that's their impact portfolio. They're doing things around getting active. They're doing things around get their communities. Um, they're doing things around diversity, equality, and inclusion. And I think they're really, you know, taking a stand, which is great. You saw that with the Colin Kaepernick um, message, you know, stand for something, um, even if it means sacrificing everything. Like that message was so powerful. And I think we're seeing brands take a stand. And, you know, with that, brands are putting people in charge of corporate social responsibility and diversity and inclusion. And it's become a much more important aspect. And I think it needs to be talked about when it comes to sponsorships. We don't want the sponsorships to lag behind. We don't want the sponsorships to be the same old traditional sports themed, you know, advertising, marketing, digital sponsorship. 
we want the sponsorships to really move ahead with the brands and be able to serve the brands and have other things that the, the, the sponsors um, need and have the, these properties and, and venues be able to offer that. So um, that's really what we're about as we work with venues and events and, and even brands. We work with venues like arenas and stadiums and um, sports teams and fairs and festivals and events. Those are all sort of considered quote unquote properties because they're the ones that need the money. They're the ones that are trying to get the sponsors. And then on the brand side, they are the sponsor. They're the ones spending the money and, and trying to get a return on investment or a return on impact in the community. And I think those things are incredibly important. And we work with the brands to and or their agencies on what that strategy should be. How can we get really creative um, to grow, you know, return on investment, grow their exposure, grow their impact in the community and uh, even, you know, grow uh, the messaging around their corporate social responsibility. So that whole strategic planning for the brands is something that we really love to do. And then by doing that, we are now teaching the venues and, and properties how to, how to better serve their, their uh, sponsors. So Vicki, that's what I was going to ask kind of, you know, I could see how the venues come to you and it's like, listen, this is overwhelming. We have all this stuff. What are we miss? What are the low hanging fruit? What are we missing out of what we could doing better or different or at all? Do you also have then some of the sponsors or brands come to you asking about strategy or where they should go? Or is it more from the venue side? It's been mostly from the venue side, because right now, when we look at our specific place in the world, a lot of venues have been closed for 15, 16, 17 months, you know, so uh, they're reopening, they're trying to get people back in their venues, um, but they're also at a really skeleton staff. So trying to get things back up and running. So a lot of venues and events uh, are really reaching out to ask for help. We can be an extension of their team. We can train their team if they have a young team and or we can come on and uh, be an extension of their team and help them get everything up and running uh, from the preparation of all their asset inventory and all their packages to really getting them ready to go to present to brands. If, if they want us to train their team, we can do that. Or if they want us to hit the road, we can do that as well. Um, now, when it comes to the, to, the, to the specific companies, the sponsors, um, I've just started getting outreach from corporate social responsibility, diversity and inclusion heads, uh, in addition to marketing, people who have seen what we've done in different, uh, different case studies. And they've said, hey, gosh, we want to talk about this because our brand is really focused on Black Lives Matter. Our brand is really focused on women's empowerment. Our brand is really focused on diversity and inclusion or sustainability or saving our oceans. And so while we have more of our experience on the venue property side, we are now starting to have a different division that can really serve the brands on a strategic side and also their agencies. So the ad agency often has advertising experts, but sometimes they don't have a sponsorship expert that can really dig into the details like this. Um, so we are trying to be a resource to, this, to the ad agencies as well as a resource to the brands. So if they wanna bring us on for a project just to have us do an audit of everything they sponsor, see how we can make, we would recommend to make some edits to that and enhance what they're doing. So it's more of a, um, cohesive machine with marketing in addition to corporate social responsibility and what they're doing in the market. You know, um, I want to talk about shifts in the sponsorship industry in general, but um, anything you mentioned briefly about Coca-Cola on sustainability. I don't know if there was anything else um, that you want to mention on that. Well, I think they've done a really great job. You know, they're a leader in sponsorship across the board. Uh, they do a number of things as many companies, but they're really taking it very seriously, the impact that um, their bottling has had on our environment. And so they have a huge initiative for um, sustainability and recycling and finding new ways to package. So I love that they're taking on that responsibility and they're trying to integrate that into the venues that they work in as official beverage. The other thing that I really like that they're doing is they've committed hundreds of millions of dollars to um, minority people in the beverage industry. So they've done a huge initiative to really support minorities, women, and um, people in the food and beverage industry to help them um, you know, grow and make it a little bit more equal. They're making a huge initiative to have more equality in their workforce 
and they're very public about all of that. So I think that the more we can help support that by activating on the venue side, you know, the more we have um, a great long relationship with them. So I really like the steps that they're taking and that they're being so public and taking on responsibility about it. Yeah. And when we talk about shifts in sponsorship in the sponsorship industry in general, I mean, the, the world has gone through some crazy times in the past uh, couple of years. What, what are you seeing kind of in the forefront of, of sponsorships? Um, you know, I think at the forefront of sponsorships, we are seeing them come back. You know, we know that people want to get out there and they want to be at events. We know that people want to be entertained. Um, it's almost like this relief when they get this opportunity to go to a concert or spend time at a sporting event with their friends. And, you know, just like you feel this immense amount of joy. They're, they're so, the, the crowds are so good, you know, at the events that I've been to at the venues that we, that we work with, um, the crowds are amazing. And, you know, even though the rules are changing all the time about masks and, and all of that, um, the crowds are awesome. Like they think everybody's just so happy to be out <laughs> that they're, they're really, really excited. That bodes well for the sponsors uh, because the sponsors want to connect with people. I think now more than ever, we're seeing brands not just put an advertisement out, but they're creating a message that connects with people. They're being much more thoughtful around how they can connect with the human person that is attending an event or a concert or a sporting event. And they're really bringing in the emotional aspect of it. And I love that. And they're not just talking about it. Like a lot of the brands are actually doing something about it. You know, they are committing funds, they're making, you know, new initiatives, they're changing things that they do in their workforce and in their workplace. Um, so the sponsorship industry, as I see it in my own personal opinion, um, the sponsorship industry cannot go back to the old school sports model of advertising, media, and signage. Like we just can't go back to that. It's great to have that. That's very important. But I think now the sponsorship industry has to step up and say, this is advertising media and signage and digital and all of the normal things that you would get in a sponsorship. And this is what we can do for you from a corporate social responsibility. There is more of a relationship that has to happen. More people need to be at the table and talk about what their goals are. How can we together make a positive impact in our community? How can we together create change in our community or in our world? And I think those conversations, brands have the funding and they want to work with a, a venue or a, a team or a property or an event um, that they trust. And they want to be able to do that in a way that really makes an impact. And so I think we see this corp the corporate sponsorship world and the sponsorship packages as a whole shifting to a new layer of the, of the game, which is building in that community component, building in that corporate social responsibility component, and building in activations that are not just about sales, but really about making an impact. I, I really see that. And I am... I'm so happy to see that shift in our industry because I think these teams and these venues see millions of people. And that is a great opportunity to shift some things that are happening in our world. I think, you know, with COVID, there were so many shifts that happened with people, with companies, with business models. Um, and I'd love to, I know that you've been doing more in the film and entertainment industry. Um, how does that work? Talk about that. You know, we were approached uh, through a contact on Clubhouse and uh, one of the uh, main, main owners of the company, of the, of the entertainment company, reached out and said, gosh, I love what you're talking about. Our films are all about diversity, inclusion, and creating a message that's entertaining, but it's also educating. And so um, they have some films coming out in um, the next seven or eight months and they wanted to partner with brands. So we're actually going out to a lot of these brands that have made large commitments to um, Black Lives Matter, corporate social responsibility, diversity, inclusion, and um, this, this suite of a variety of films has 
messaging. There's, you know, one that's targeted more toward teens. There's one that's targeted towards, you know, women of various colors and different challenges they've gone through and the overcoming of that. Um, I think they're really, really great topics. And I wanted to be a part of that. I was just like, gosh, I want to be behind something that is this, this Mm. is what we need in our world. And if I can do this with venues and events, then I'm sure we can do this with, with a film. So we're just tipping our toe in the water of being in the film industry. We're so excited to have some great conversations happening around how we can support these films from product placement and sponsors of the films and just helping to get them made. Um, so I'm really excited to have that uh, in our new lane of uh, vertical that we can offer. I love it. Uh, Vicki, I have one last question. Before I ask it, I want to point people towards cxpagency.com. Check out what you're doing there. Are there any other places we should point people online to check out? I'm on all the social channels. It's always under CXP Agency. So uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and Facebook. We we are present in all of the those social channels anyway. Um, so yeah, any of those places are great, but CXP agency is our website. So check us out there. Last question, Vicki. Um, I know you've worked in, in around the MBA for over a decade. And so I want, I would love to hear your favorite MBA story. Oh my gosh. I worked for the Indiana Pacers when Reggie Miller was our star player And I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to go to the New York Knicks game where Reggie scored like a number of points to win the game in the last couple of seconds. Um, Spike Lee was there. There was this whole big thing happening and it was incredible. I was like 10 rows off the floor in a corner and just, we were going crazy. Um, So it was really, really such a fun time to work for the the team. I worked for the Indiana Pacers for 10 years. I was so blessed to have the opportunity to go to a number of different um, finals games and playoff games all around the country. And really just blessed to work with such an amazing group of people. Um, I was so, I stayed there for so long because of Donnie Walsh, who was the general manager at that time. And his guidance and leadership was really, really powerful to me. And also, um, my boss and my team at the time, um, they were just great. I'm still friends with all of them. Um, we've kept in touch, even though many of us have gone on to different directions, but it was like a family and, you know, to have the opportunity to work for a sports team for 10 years in the NBA as a woman, um, I was really blessed and I learned so much. I mean, that's just the, the crux of, um, the lessons and the values and, um, the relationship uh, the really, the importance of relationship, all of those things are, are things that I build into my agency today. And, you know, I just hope that I can be as good of a mentor as I had when I was, when I was working for the NBA team. And, uh, and I'm just really grateful for that time in my life because it was not only a blast, it was really such a learning experience for the trajectory that my career has taken. And it's, I feel like I live in a dream every day. It's really incredible. Vicki, there's a disparity today. I can't imagine what it was when you were in the NBA, probably mu- much bigger, right? What was it like as a, as a woman working in the NBA? There were two women on the sales team and um, really the rest of the women were mostly support staff. There was one woman that ran our community relations and one woman that ran media Um, and I, I, you know, I think at that time, the Indiana Pacers were wonderful because it was a very diverse audience or very diverse office. And they did give us a shot. You know, they, I had a shot just like all the other guys on the team to sell. And, um, I may have had little post-it notes in my office to make sure I knew what I was talking about. Um, but I really, I really felt at that time they were very progressive. I know, you know, at that time there were definitely, um, challenges in, for women in sports. And I feel like I was really blessed to have great bosses and great mentors. Um, so although I know that there were very few women in the sports industry, um, I felt really fortunate to be one and to be able to have such a long career. And I, I made the choice. I got my MBA and I was like, hmm, maybe it'd be more interesting to be on the client side. So I went to an airline and managed all of the sponsorships 
for our airline with uh, within North America. So the NBA, NFL teams, Major League Baseball, PGA, NHL. So I got to negotiate for our brands on the client side um, for, for many years for the airline, which was also a really great learning experience mm. as well. So I think all of the Both steps sides that I've taken, it. yeah, all the steps that I've taken have given me a lot of backgrounds and also a, a real uh, keen understanding of the behind the scenes, you know, what does it take to really build a sponsorship that has longevity and purpose and is going to be a win-win on both sides. And that's really what we're about. We're really about creating connections and partnerships that make an impact. So CXP stands for connections and partnerships that make an impact in the world. And that's really um, what I wanted to build my brand on was that um, how I was raised in the industry. Vicki, I want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone check out more episodes of the podcast, Inspired Insider. Check out cxpagency.com. Thanks, you. Thanks, Vicki. Thanks, everyone. Jeremy, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.